Hello, I'm Greg Rose for FarmExperts.com. Today we're speaking with Dr. Daryl Shep, a senior vice president with Merck and & Company and head of Merck's neuroscience franchise. Dr. Shep, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Oh, you're very welcome. You were described in a recent New York Times article as an innovator, someone who dares to think differently. What we'd like to do today is to have you tell us something about your novel ideas regarding the treatment of psychosis. To begin, could you please briefly outline our current understanding of the pathogenesis of schizophrenia? Well, the pathogenesis of schizophrenia has been elusive. As many psychiatric diseases, there's probably no single cause of schizophrenia. It's a complex disorder, a heterogeneous, multifaceted disorder, multiple symptom domains. So there probably is no single cause of schizophrenia. Although uh, recent studies, imaging studies, pharmacological studies, um, other types of studies, we're starting to learn quite a bit about uh, what causes schizophrenia and what maybe newer treatments might be available or at least be available to be tested in treating schizophrenia. How effective are current therapies? The well, current therapies were discovered basically decades ago and they all have in common that they block dopamine receptors. Um, current antipsychotics work fairly well against acute symptoms of uh, psychosis but the chronic, more debilitating symptoms of schizophrenia, which really are responsible for a lack of functional, basically, abilities in schizophrenic patients are not actually served very well by the current drugs. And in fact, many patients on these drugs do not continue with them. So compliance is a problem which further exacerbates their effectiveness. Well, is the compliance issue due to a, a lack of efficacy or is it due to side effects? It's actually due to both. The studies which are available suggest that uh, for some patients and some agents, it's lack of efficacy, uh, and patients will resort to trying another drug. Um, um, importantly, though, as even if you try another drug, in many cases, uh, it's a drug from a pretty similar class, the atypical antipsychotics, which all have in common a similar mechanism. Tolerability is also an issue, some more with other agents and some patients. And that, again, leads to switching to other agents to try to mitigate, basically, the side effects in the patients. But essentially, there is only one major treatment option for schizophrenics now, and that is, well, originally the typical antipsychotics and now the atypical antipsychotics, which, again, are, some, are one class of drugs. What's really needed in schizophrenia is alternate therapies, which fall outside of the, these classes of drugs that currently exist for patients, basically, um, potentially to uh, help patients who don't respond or can't tolerate the current class of drugs. Well, do you consider schizophrenia to be a single disease? Yeah, well, um, well that's an interesting question. I think uh, it's considered to be a, a psychiatric disorder, and it is characterized as, as a disease or disorder, schizophrenia. But um, it's made up of three major symptom domains, and patients can be affected, can have uh, various degrees of all or one of these symptom domains at, an, at any time. And that's acute, basically positive symptoms, negative symptoms, and cognitive symptoms. So patients, quite a bit of individuality in terms of uh, these three symptom domains. I see. Well, it, and the reason I asked that question was that it made me sort of wonder if this is one of the reasons that you started thinking about novel therapies, about moving outside of the area of dopamine interactions. How did you come to the conclusion that glutamate receptors were involved in schizophrenia? Well, I'm a, um, my passion is a pharmacology. I'm a ph pharmacologist by training, and uh, I've been interested in the glutamate system as a pharmacologist for, actually, for over two decades now. Um, through that research, a number of novel tool, pharmacological tools were developed. Um, in fact, uh, so it's really a matter of combining the pharmacological, new pharmacological knowledge around the glutamate system with a hypothesis, which is actually over, over decades old, which is the glutamate hypothesis of schizophrenia. So the glutamate hypothesis of schizophrenia is based on the fact that drugs which modulate glutamate can exacerbate or even manifest schizophrenic-like symptoms in patients. So another way of thinking about this is if the glutamate system is disrupted, and that involves a glutamate 
imbalance, then pharmacological agents that basically act on the glutamate system can bring the glutamate system back into balance, and that might have antipsychotic activity. That was really the interest was first the pharmacological tools and later therapeutic, basically investigational therapeutic agents, and then applying it to what we knew about the glutamate system and schizophrenia and models of schizophrenia. Uh, then, uh, very interestingly, we found, uh, along with others, um, there was antipsychotic activity was found in the pharmacological agents in the case of metabotrol or glutamate agonists. They had antipsychotic activity in models where clinically effective antipsychotics were. Some models, uh, they didn't work. Some models, they did. But there was enough, really enough evidence that we felt it was justified in testing the hypothesis in the clinic. How important is glutamate receptor subtype activity in terms of developing new drug therapies? I think it's important that you develop selective agents so that you're actually testing a hypo specific hypothesis. It's very difficult to uh, basically discover and develop drugs where you don't understand their mechanism of action. This is the age of molecular biology. We have a very good understanding what the targets of no transmitters are in the brain. In the glutamate system, we have metabotropic receptors, ionotropic receptors, transporters. So you know what proteins basically glutamate interacts with, and you can make very selective agents for those the receptors and transporters and proteins. And then you can study their pharmacology, and you can come up with a good hypothesis basically to test, uh, as opposed to testing a compound you're basically te using a compound to test a hypothesis and driving knowledge and basically in that manner. Do you believe that glutamate agonists could treat the cognitive deficits associated with schizophrenia? Well, there is a, there's a very large literature on, in both human literature and, uh, and model literature on glutamate and cognition. So it's very well um, accepted that glutamate is an important neurotransmitter in the brain which is involved in cognition. It's involved in a form of cognition called plasticity. Plasticity is, are long-term events that have basically, in some cases, mediate uh, basically remembering, even forgetting changes in plasticity. The glutamate system is well documented to be involved in cognition. In the antipsychotic area, there are some mechanisms which have pro-cognitive properties, and at least in, in models, and that needs to be tested in humans. The real test will be, or does the pro-cognitive pharmacology of these agents translate in a schizophrenic population where you have a cognitive deficit? Because you can't really specifically model the schizophrenia cognitive deficit. Um, you're going to have to basically test it in the clinic. So the paradigm really is to find agents through the glutamate system that, are, that enhance cognition in models, test that in, in basically humans in clinical studies, and uh, hope that it alleviates basically the cognitive deficits in schizophrenia. What does the future hold in terms of Merck's contributions to the developments of new therapies for schizophrenia? At Merck, we're committed to treating high, areas of high unmet medical need uh, severe, severe debilitating illnesses such as schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a chronic, lifelong illness. The current drugs are less than basically adequate, uh, particularly in the area of uh, cognitive deficits. So cognition associated, cognitive impairment associated with schizophrenia is a high unmet need. Uh, at Merck, we're looking at uh, basically all, all types of uh, deficits in schizophrenia. We're interested in novel mechanisms that treat acute, basically positive symptoms. We're interested in novel approaches to treating negative symptoms as well as cognitive symptoms. And in fact, uh, you know, we're interested in running the appropriate trials that we need to do, applying the right mechanism, the right pharmacology against basically that specific deficit and running the clinical trial to see whether or not uh, it basically improves that component to the schizophrenia illness. Dr. Shep, thank you very much for your insightful comments today. You're welcome.